of the DNC are gathering this week in Chicago for their summer meeting. They'll be confronting frustration from the party's crushing loss back in 2016 during the presidential election. Committee members are expected to decide the fate of so-called superdelegates. That's a group made up of members of the DNC and other elected officials. Those superdelegates overwhelmingly backed eventually, eventual Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders in a contentious 2016 primary race. DNC party chairman Tom uh, Perez is pushing the proposal to overhaul the current system, which some argue give establishment candidates an unfair advantage. CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe joins us now from Chicago to break this all down. So, Ed, uh, how would this challenge to the superdelegate system affect Democratic, the Democratic primary process in 2020? Sure. Well, guys, what it essentially does is, is neuter the, the influence and power of superdelegates. They'd still have the title, they'd still earn that status by being an elected official or a senior party member. Uh, but in essence, uh, they wouldn't be able to do what they did in 2016, which was basically to pledge for a candidate uh, who was in a far more competitive situation than the party was used to. What would happen basically is if, if you got into a situation where there was only about a 500 delegate difference uh, between two opponents, they'd have to stay out of it, and they'd only be allowed to weigh in in later rounds of balloting. It's a very obscure uh, and unlikely scenario, uh, but it's basically designed to appease those that are concerned that this block of influential party members swayed the nomination process in 2016 to Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. More critically, more, more I think, uh, relevant, frankly, to, to the process is the fact that they're trying to encourage the states over the course of the next cycle to incentivize using primaries instead of caucuses, and that if they use a caucus uh, to, to perhaps allow for a way where instead of holding one meeting at like 7 o'clock at night, there'd be an option for people who might have to work or couldn't make it to cast a ballot somehow earlier in the day. All of this designed to open up the process, make it a little more accountable, create a paper trail, and try to eliminate a lot of the concerns that festered up over the course of the 2016 campaign. So a vote on the issue is set for Saturday. I want to play some of what Congressman uh, Ro Khanna told you about that. Well, I've said that I don't think we should have superdelegates. I don't understand why, as a congressperson, I should have a larger vote in who becomes our president than any other American citizen. Uh, and so I'm glad that the DNC is taking steps. The current proposal would at least uh, stop the superdelegates from having a vote on the first ballot, uh, and that'll go a long way. All right, so who else is in favor of the measure and who is opposed to it? You've seen opposition, Anne-Marie, primarily from uh, minority lawmakers who believe that by having this status, uh, it gives them, it gives... Uh, their constituencies, uh, it gives minorities generally uh, a bigger voice, a bigger say in the process. There's been some serious opposition to this from members of the Congressional Black Caucus uh, and others who say, look, uh, by virtue of being elected into this position, by virtue of being a senior leader and activist for the party, I deserve to have this ability uh, to, to potentially sway the process. So uh, whether you call it a superdelegate or an unpledged delegate or a pledged delegate, uh, there's some vernacular around that, uh, that there is some concern. We spoke also uh, around the same time we talked to Congressman Rokana with Congressman Gregory Meeks of New York, who's one of those who's opposed. Let's listen to what he said. We get elected by our folks and have a, have a, have a strong voice uh, for the folks that we represent. Uh, and so, and, and the reality of it is that uh, never have unpledged delegates uh, overrode uh, the pledged delegates, you know. Some make the argument the last election. The fact of the matter is Hillary Clinton won more unpledged delegates. That's how she won the nomination. So the perception of anything else is just not real, and I don't think we should make changes based upon perceptions as opposed to reality. Yeah. So Ed, basically, what he's saying there, Anne Marie, is it's much ado, much ado about, much ado about nothing because Hillary Clinton uh, had an overwhelming lead over Bernie Sanders. His supporters are, are trying to just, you know, mess with a system that has worked 
and there's no need to be making this change. Yeah, it's an interesting question that uh, Congress is going to wrestle with. I want to ask you, though, Ed, uh, before we move on, what's going on behind you? There's a sign that's popping up uh, over your shoulder. Um, somebody seems to be protesting. Uh, just so our viewers don't, when they switch uh, on to CBSN, they don't, they get a sense of what exactly is happening. Sure. Uh, basically, because this is a meeting of Democratic Party officials, it's going to draw uh, representatives from labor unions across the country who are concerned about various things. In this case, these guys are from Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee is one of the cities that's bidding to host the 2020 Democratic Convention, which is one of the things that will be discussed this week here in Chicago. They're concerned about uh, the labor union status at one of the venues that might potentially host the convention. There's other folks doing it across the street. Uh, you know, given that they're Democrats, they rely on support of, uh, of labor unions. Uh, it's no surprise that they're here. Yeah, so thank you very much for that. All right, let me ask you about uh, this uh, potential hacking of the DNC. They contacted the FBI this week about what they thought was an attempted hack on the committee's voter database. Uh, how important will election security matter, and will it be on the agenda this week? It's definitely on the agenda, which is why I think this, this came up at all yesterday. Look, since 2016, the party has more than tripled the number of IT or cybersecurity staffers that they have on board. They've, they've recruited and hired people from Yahoo, from Uber, and others that are familiar with how these kinds of phishing attacks happen. The guy who's in charge of this basically walked into a meeting yesterday of all the chairmen from the state parties across the country and started talking about this, I think, in essence, trying to prove his worth and sort of use this as an example of why what they've now been doing is working. Um, and it appears to be working. The problem is that this hack was not a foreign entity. It wasn't Russia. It wasn't China or Iran. Uh, it wasn't some other group that was trying to infiltrate the DNC. It was actually a third-party security firm uh, asked to do this by the Michigan State Democratic Party, apparently, uh, in a bid to test whether or not the DNC system was working, and, and it was. Uh, so, you know, the system worked, but the DNC kind of probably blew it out of proportion a little bit uh, out of concern that perhaps yet another attack was happening. Either way, it proves that they've made changes since 2016. Uh, what they're trying to do seems to be protecting uh, their sensitive information. In this case, it was an attempt on what's called, or on what is a, a big voter database uh, that essentially tracks voters all across the country. All right, Ed O'Keefe for us in Chicago. Thank you, Ed.